And for the latest on Malaysia's response to the crashed airliner, let's check in with CCTV's Ryan Meltzer in Kuala Lumpur. Ryan. Yes, Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak actually made two public statements in the last 24 hours since the plane disappeared, which is more than he made in the first several weeks after Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 uh, disappeared, vanished back in March. Uh, now, he was supposed to speak at around 8 p.m. Friday Malaysian time, but he said he had to postpone that due to taking phone calls from world leaders, but he did eventually address the nation. We're making various efforts through diplomatic channels and close relations with the countries involved to ensure the investigation and victim identification process are carried out smoothly. Now, uh, Najib spoke with uh, the Secretary General of the UN, uh, Ban Ki-moon, last night, and he said he was stressing to him the need for there to be an international independent investigation, didn't want to see the disturbance of the crash site, and wanted to make sure that if the plane was shot down, that the perpetrators were brought to justice as quickly as possible. He said he also spoke with President Putin and asked, he used the term, asked President Putin to cooperate with the international investigation. And Ryan, there have been questions over why Malaysia Airlines was flying this route. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, at a press conference held by the transport minister on Friday afternoon, he was hit with a lot of hard questions about why would Malaysia fly over this area when it was known that the rebels in that area possessed weapons capable of bringing down planes and had in fact previously brought down planes. He pointed out that the International Civil Aviation Organization had kept this route open, had not warned planes to stay away from this route, and that out of 16 Asia-Pacific uh, Alliance airlines, 15 of them had still been flying this route. Also, it emerged, Malaysia Airlines announced later in the day, that they had the plane had actually requested to fly at 35,000 feet, but Ukrainian air traffic control had told them to fly at uh, 33,000 feet, which was a mere 1,000 feet, slightly less than that, above the minimum altitude that they were allowed to fly over this conflict zone. Now, since the downing of MH17, the ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, has closed that route to air travel. All right. So Ryan Meltzer, live for us in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for that update.